Hello everyone, welcome back to Time with Tolu Ifituri. Today I'm going to be inviting someone over on my channel to talk about uh, speech delay versus language delay, which you'll remember I've done a video on before. But for more clarification and um, understanding, I've decided to bring in an expert, you know, a therapist, someone who works with children who has, uh, have um, uh, speech delays and has seen results. I personally have seen results from her on children that she has worked with. And that's why today I decided to have her on my channel. So please do watch, share, teachers, school owners, parents. You need to have this so that you can easily decipher if a child needs attention or if it is just a natural normal delay. Thank you for coming back. Please like and subscribe. If you are new here, please share and, you know, comment so we can know that you are with us. Thank you so very much, everyone. Bye. See you at the end of the video. Good morning, everyone. My name is Zamel. And I'm the executive director, Anchor of Autism Center. So today I'm going to talk about um, speech and language um, disorder. Now, Ms. Tolu in a video has talked about um, what speech and language disorder is about. I should, tr should try to throw more light on what speech and language um, delay is about. So I'm going to talk more on it. And um, oftentimes, a lot of parents come into the center and then they ask questions like, uh, my child, why is my child not talking? Or my child talks is not so clear. I don't hear what he or she says. Or my child talks, but it's not age appropriate. So when we say age appropriate, what we mean is the child does not use words that is appropriate for their age. So for example, a child of a five, a five-year-old child will normally say if she wants water, mommy, I want water, or daddy, I want water. But this time around, the child says just a word out of the sentence so water so there's no constructive sentence so that's what we mean by when we say the words are not age appropriate and some of them will ask questions like my child doesn't talk is my child is in the spectrum is my child autistic now so i'm going to clarify this not all kids who have speech and language delay or speech delay or language delay are in the spectrum it can stand alone it's just just that oftentimes kids with speech and language or speech or language delay tends to be in the spectrum. So it's it's more common for you to see that kids in the spectrum exhibit traits of speech and language delay. So it doesn't mean that any child who has a speech delay or speech disorder or language delay is in the spectrum. So I just want to clarify that. Now when we talk about speech, what do we really mean? Speech is um, I'm I'm trying to I'm going to explain this as simple as I, I can be so that you understand what I'm trying to say. So when we talk about speech delay, speech, first of all, is about the bringing out of sounds. So I am talking, you can hear the sounds, that's speech, so sounds. So the mechanism that is involved in helping you bring out sounds, that's speech. So speech is about the mechanism involved in helping you bring out sound. It is the verbal production of language. You understand the verbal that's the the expressive production of language now that's speech so when we talk about language because oftentimes parents or people confuse speech and language delay so a child might have speech delay but not language delay and a child might have language um speech so when we talk about language because oftentimes parents or people confuse speech and language delay so a child might have speech delay but not language delay, and a child might have language um, delay or disorder and not speech delay, but just that, they sometimes interlap. So it is more common to meet a child or to meet a person with speech delay that also has language delay. So it's, they, they sometimes interlap, but doesn't mean that they can't stand alone. Just the way I explained for um, um, children with autism spectrum disorder. Now, speech like I said, it's the verbal production of language. Now, what then is language? Language can be in two forms. Language is, a, is just a, generally a means of communication. 
So language can be in two form. We have the receptive and the expressive language. So we'll talk about the receptive language. The receptive language is the ability for a person to understand and interpret information. So either through um, um, gestures. So let me explain what I mean. So when we say la um, um, receptive language, if I say, Daniel, please go and get me a chair. And Daniel goes to get me a chair. So Daniel understands the information that I have asked him to do. So I, to I told Daniel, get me a chair. Daniel understood. The brain interpreted the information. So there, there was a level of communication and Daniel understood it. So that's a receptive aspect of language. The ability to understand what has been communicated. The ability to understand the information that is sent to the brain. The ability to understand what has been communicated. So, for example, again, I say... Um, Joshua or I say um, Daniela, please can you go get me your shoe and put on your shoes and so Daniela is looking at me and Daniela does not understand what I'm saying does not understand me telling her to go get a shoe and go um, or go and put on a shoe so that means there's a problem because she's not able to understand what has been communicated to her her brain is not able to interpret what has been communicated to her that's the receptive aspect now don't forget that daniela didn't have to say anything she didn't say anything i didn't need her to say a word to me i just needed her to take do a particular action which is go get her shoes and put on her shoes so that's the receptive aspect of, of language so the ability to understand what has been communicated to you now don't forget generally language is a means of communication now, but this time around is the ability to understand what has been communicated to you, the ability to interpret information. And uh, this is not even just about verbal. If, for example, now someone will talk about expressive language, that is the verbal part of language, the ability to express what has been communicated to you, the ability to express what you have, or the ability to express what you want. So you say, for example, you say a child um, comes to me and say, or, okay, let me use this example. You give it a book, the book, you give the book to John, and you say, John, let's read this book. And John says, I am a boy. I live in Sokoto, and um, my dad has a red car. I say, John, read it again. John says, I am a boy. I live in Sokoto, and my dad has a red car. Now, John has read that beautifully it was clear the sounds were clear so there was no problem with articulation it was really clear and then you say okay john so who has a red car who lives in sokoto and john is lost for words and he's okay read it again just says i am a boy i live in sokoto and my daddy has a red car and you say john who is a boy john can say and you say john who has a red car or who lives in Sokoto and John is lost for what John is looking at you John cannot tell you that because John in as much as John has read it John does not understand the language but he is not able to understand it to comprehend what he has just read out so he read it but he is not comprehending it that's a language problem not a speech problem I don't know if you understand that that's a language problem and not a speech problem so for language sometimes intonation is clear the child can talk the sounds are clear the, the there's no problem with articulation you can hear what the child is saying the child can read effectively but can the child comprehend what they are saying or can the child comprehend what they are reading that's a language problem so you have to understand the difference so for speech sometimes the child does not have words you see some kids they don't have words or they have limited words but they can understand what is being said to them do you understand? They can understand what is being said to them. So, language is a delay. Like, is a delay in the development of the use of knowledge of words. Do you understand? It's a delay in the development of the use of words, of knowledge of words and the language in general. So, that's what it means.